the clinical uh, case that we today is uh, dynamic hyperinflation uh, syndrome. So you have this patient who has been admitted to the intensive care unit with the diagnosis of severe asthma requiring uh, intubation and mechanical ventilation. He's been uh, placed on uh, uh, volume control mode of uh, ventilation with a tidal volume of 620. His ideal body weight is uh, 70 kilos. His uh, rate uh, was set at uh, 18 and inspired time of 1.7. His FIO2 is at 40% and his saturation is uh, uh, 98%. His uh, uh, pH is 7.48 uh, uh, and uh, PCO2 is uh, 30. So when you analyze his uh, ventilator graphics, you can easily appreciate that in expiration, the expiratory flow is limited with decreased peak expiratory uh, flow and limitation of the expiratory flow to the level that at the end of expiration, the expiratory flow does not reach the zero point. So there's a persistent flow at the end of expiration. Notice that the next breath starts before we empty the lung completely. That means that there is air trapping inside the lung and this has hemodynamic consequences if it accumulates further. So in order to deal with the problem, essentially what we need to do is we need to allow more time in expiration for this patient. So the expiratory flow will go down all the way to zero before the next breath. There are multiple maneuvers that we can do for this patient to allow more expiratory time. But first, well, let's start with his ventilation. We're giving him 620. This is almost 9, K, 9 ml per kg. And his pH is 7.48. And the CO2 is 30. So he's getting more ventilation than what it is required for him. I usually give those patients between 6 to 8 ml per kg of ideal body weight. So let's start with that. And let's go down on the tidal volume to the level of 7 ml per kg. And we say that he's 70 kilos of ideal body weight. So let's give him 480 and see that the dynamic hyperinflation has improved slightly. So we're putting less air into the lung, of course, that will be associated with air, less air traffic. The second thing that we can do is his respiratory rate is slightly elevated and we can do, go down on the respiratory rate to 14 and by decreasing the respiratory rate, we are changing the IE ratio. So we're gaining more time in this expiration and you can see how the dynamic hyperinflation syndrome is improving. At the same time, if you, next, if you, if you take a look on the inspiration, you can see here that there is a plateau that is not required. This patient has no problem with oxygenation and I would rather use this time for expiration. So let's eliminate the plateau time and add this time to expiration. So the way we eliminate it is by going down on the inspiratory time. So we go down to on the inspiratory time to the minimum required for this tidal volume to get in. And by doing this, you can see that now we eliminated the plateau completely and the uh, expiratory flow is improved, reaching very close to the zero point, but has not uh, been eliminated completely. So the next thing we do is let's try to gain more of the expiratory time by decreasing the inspiratory time. And the way we decrease the inspiratory time, and this is volume control mode of ventilation, we can go up on the flow. Let's double the flow for this patient. So let's go up to 60. And by going up on the flow, now we can deliver the 480 faster. Let me just freeze it for you here. So you can see that the uh, 
480 ml has been delivered faster so again more inspiratory time here again again uh, plateau time here that is not needed i'm going to uh, take this from inspiration give it to expiration by decreasing the inspiratory time again so by going down inspiratory time to the minimum you can see that now i'm using most of the uh, time for expiration and i almost completely eliminated uh, uh, the uh, dynamic haber inflation notice that the peak inspiratory pressure has increased but this is uh, not the plateau pressure the peak inspiratory pressure may not have uh, uh, much of the effects on the uh, lungs in terms of the paratrauma so i would not be very much concerned about it uh, at this point so this way uh, we went through the different uh, maneuvers that uh, uh, essentially uh, aim to increase the expiratory time in order to improve the dynamic hyperinflation syndrome uh, in addition to all those maneuvers of course the patient is on uh, uh, beta 2 agonist uh, as bronchodilators and steroids to improve his uh, uh, severe asthma uh, thank you very much.